what happened to the Spencer Davis group. Early in the 1960s is when their narrative began. A linguistics student at the University of Birmingham in England named Spencer Davis decided to form a rock band. He had mastered the harmonica and the keyboard accordion as a youngster. By the age of 16, he had been completely enamored with the guitar and the American rhythm and blues music that was beginning to spread across the Atlantic. Davis eagerly sought out any R&B performance that came to town because there were limited opportunities to hear music in England. He was astounded when he heard a Dixieland band do a skiffle rendition of the R&B classic John Henry. Skiffle, a type of music performed with both conventional instruments and improvised instruments like washboards and jugs and kazoos, was to the R&B sound of Great Britain what the blues was to that of America. It had an impact on groups like The Animals, The Rolling Stones, and Manfred Mann, and gave Davis the ideal platform for the emergence of his signature sound. After performing Skiffle as a soloist for a while, Davis was prepared to use his talent with his R&B ensemble. In 1963, Davis went to a nearby pub to see the classic jazz band Muff Woody, which included Muff and Steve Winwood. At the time, Steve was just 15 years old, but his musical prowess was already making waves. He began playing the piano as a child before switching to the guitar in his early teens. He later spent a year in music college where he discovered songwriting. Muff, who was five years older than Steve, started learning the piano at a young age as well. By the time they started Muff Woody, he was a skilled jazz musician. The brothers' wide range of musical styles immediately convinced Davis that he had discovered his band. Soon after, he persuaded them to form the Rhythm and Blues Quartet with him and Pete York on drums. Within a year, they had a regular gig at a club in London mostly playing R&B covers. When they changed their name to the Spencer Davis Group in 1964, they started to attract some pretty well-known notice. The band swiftly issued their first single, a rendition of John Lee Hooker's Dimples, on the Fontana label as a result of the fast-moving music industry buzz. It was met with muted enthusiasm. Even though their following three albums made the top 50 in the UK record charts, they failed to attract the same level of interest as the band did when performing live. That would quickly alter. The Spencer Davis Group's performance in a London bar completely astounded Chris Blackwell, the pioneering music promoter and creator of Island Records. He introduced Jackie Edwards, a Jamaican singer-songwriter, to the group. In 1965, the group released Edwards' song, Keep On Running. It was an instant hit that dethroned We Can Work It Out by the Beatles from the top of the UK charts. Their subsequent single, Somebody Help Me, another Edwards original, also debuted at number one. In Great Britain, they immediately found success. They developed a devoted fan base by touring alone and alongside musical heavyweights like The Who and The Rolling Stone. They were recognized as Britain's best new group at the beginning of 1966. They also released three albums during this time in addition to the singles. All three of the band's albums, which emphasized their rhythm and blues style, managed to crack the top 10 in the UK despite being less well known than the singles released. They also made their mandatory cinematic debut in the silly adventure picture, The Ghost Goes Gear, just like so many other pop groups of the day. As their fame grew, so did Steve Winwood's reputation as a natural musical talent. His vocal range from the high of a youthful boy to the deep soul-scratching wail of a bluesman was a mesmerizing draw. He slowly began to eclipse the band. On their second album, Autumn 66, songs like When a Man Loves a Woman and Dust My Blues highlighted his songwriting abilities as well as his vocals. Despite their popularity in Great Britain, they weren't able to make an impact on the American music charts. Then in 1966, they released the original composition, Gimme Some Love. Written quickly under the exacting guidance of Blackwell, the song was an easy collaboration among the members. Driven by an infectious dance beat and a chorus that demands to be sung along with it, it was destined to become a classic. American audiences went wild for it. Already a number three hit in the UK, it climbed to number seven on the American charts by early 1967. 
Within two months, I'm a Man, another original song also hit the top 10 in both Great Britain and America. The Spencer Davis group was an international sensation. Steve, however, had already decided to leave the group to start his band, Traffic. Muff also gave notice, choosing to pursue the business side of the music industry. Though the loss of the Winwood brothers was a dramatic blow to the group, Davis was not about to let his namesake band fold easily. He soon enlisted Phil Sawyer for guitar and Eddie Harden for vocals and keyboards. Their first release together was for a 1967 movie soundtrack, Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush, which also featured the music of Steve Winwood's new venture, Traffic. In 1968, after replacing Sawyer with veteran guitarist Ray Fenwick, the Spencer Davis group released the aptly named album with their new face on. Though it lacked the distinctive sound that made the original group so successful, it then said two new songs, Time Seller and Mr. Second Class, to the charts. Despite this minor success, the band continued to suffer. York, who had experienced both the highs and the lows, decided to pursue a duo career with Harden. Still committed to the group, Davis recruited bassist D. Murray and drummer Nigel Olsen to join him in Fenwick, and in 1969, they released two albums, Heavies and Funky. Neither album produced a hit, and by 1970, Olsen and Murray left to join Elton John's band. No more replacements were sought, and within the year, Davis packed his guitar and moved to California. Though the original Spencer Davis group was gone, their reputation lived on. Considered to be one of the most influential of the British Invasion bands, Davis and the rest of the original band members discovered that many of their songs were considered classics. Perhaps hoping to recapture some of their classic spirit, Davis briefly reformed the Spencer Davis group in 1973. Featuring Davis, York, Harden, Fenwick, and newcomer Charlie McCracken on bass, the group put out two albums, Gluggo and Living in a Backstreet. The former featured Catch You on the Rebop, an infectious tune that enjoyed some success. The original band members pursued varied careers in the music industry during the 1970s and 1980s. After traffic split up, Steve Winwood briefly played in the bands Blind Faith and Air Force. Later, he went out alone and gained a large international fan base for his solo work. In the 1980s, his solo career flourished, and he had a number of hit singles, including While You See a Chance from 1980 from the album Arc of a Diver and Valerie from 1982 from Taking Back to the Night, the remix for Valerie from Winwood's 1987 compilation album Chronicles, and that's what helped Valerie become a hit. The album Back in the High Life, which included major hits like Back in the High Life Again, The Finer Things, and the US Billboard Hot 100 number one smash Higher Love, marked the pinnacle of his career in 1986. He made a comeback to the top of the Hot 100 with Roll With It from the album of the same name, and Holding On also did well that year. He ceased having popular singles at the end of the 1980s, but he continued to put out albums until 2008 when Nine Lives, his most recent album, was released. Eventually, Muff, his brother, rose to the position of Chief of Artist Development at CBS Records in England. Pete York worked hard to build a successful career as a jazz drummer, performing both live and in the studio. Davis has experience in the music business as a promoter for performers like Bob Marley and Robert Palmer, as well as a consultant for those making music videos. He has also made appearances in sitcoms and television ads, including a co-starring part in Married with Children. He also gave popular lectures on the background of rock and roll. He has also made time for his first love, making music, despite his hectic schedule. In 1972 and 1984, he made solo albums, worked with others on a few folk records, and traveled the globe with a group of legendary rock musicians. Davis founded the Class Rock All-Stars Ensemble in 1993. In 1995, he quit the band to start World Class Rockers with Randy Meisner, Bobby Kimball, and Denny Lane, all former members of the Eagles, the Moody Blues, and the Wings. Only Davis and Harden from the original lineups from the 1960s remained when the band reformed in 2006. 
Despite having two different lineups, the Spencer Davis Group continued to tour the U.S. and Europe. In both lineups, only Spencer Davis was present. Harden stayed with the band's UK iteration until his passing in 2015. Unfortunately, Spencer Davis passed away in California on October 19, 2020 at the age of 81 while receiving pneumonia treatment. And that right there effectively ended the Spencer Davis group. And that's what happened to the Spencer Davis group. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And here are some of my favorite Spencer Davis group songs. Give me some of your favorites as well, and I'll see you in the next video.